So this is going to serve as our before. <laughs> this is my ironing board, which I genuinely love. It is an all metal ironing board, so you don't have to worry about it rusting or getting moldy or anything like that. But as we know, ironing boards are restricted in terms of how much surface area you have to press on um, and just don't provide any storage solutions at all, which is why I have my little ironing cart that has my Taylor's clappers and my hams and all of my like little pressing knickknacks that I need close by. So instead of having these two separate things, I am going to create a more permanent fixture, more like a piece of furniture that is going to serve as both my ironing board and my storage for all of my ironing needs. So here's how you do it. So I purchased this little rolling cart from Walmart. I think it came in at right around 50 bucks. And the thing that I was looking for the most when it came to some kind of base, storage base for my ironing board station was the height. So it's very important to get one that sat comfortably at your hip height. So this one happens to be 32 inches tall, I believe. I was shooting for 35, but settled for 32 because it was such a good price. So it is made of, they call it bamboo, but it's really just um, particle board that's been, um, you know, it has that, that layer of fake wood stuff on it. So I'm going to sufficiently scratch this up and then I'm going to spray paint it with my favorite spray paint, Rust-Oleum Painters Touch Two Times Ultra Cover Paint and Primer combined. Just going to paint it white because all the other furniture in my sewing room is white. So I'll be back with a white cart. One thing I did want to point out is that I removed the wheels, like the feet wheels, and I also removed the drawer. Um, the drawer has a handle which I need to unattach, detach, and then I'll be able to spray the front of the drawer and it'll be fine and just removing these wheels so that they don't get any paint on them at all. Okay, everybody is all painted. I am going to leave her out here, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, try and get rid of as much of that spray paint smell as I can, and then come back out, put the wheels back on, put the drawer handle back on, and wheel her back in the apartment, which is where we are going to then attach the ironing board. So let me show you how to do that while she's drying. Okay, so here is essentially our ironing board. I'm gonna take you through the layers one by one. So this is a piece of what they call MDF, medium density fiber board. It's probably what you're more familiar with, like with the furniture from Target, shelving, things like that. It is smooth on all sides. You don't have to worry about sanding it down. Not that we would do that to cover this anyways, but you just don't have to worry about any splinters. Then I got some medium loft batting from the fabric store. I got some canvas duck cloth. So it's really thick, but 100% cotton. And then this is the ironing board cover material. It's literally called that. <laughs> It is sold um, on a bolt. You get it by the yard, just like you do with your regular fabrics, but it is meant to make an ironing board cover out of. So those are the layers that we have. I have the ironing board cover right side down, then the duck cloth, then the batting, and then the um, shelving. And I am just literally going to take my um, staple gun, wrap this up all around all sides, and create an ironing board that's essentially the same shape as this shelf, which is 16 inches wide by four feet long. All right, so I have brought the cart in, taken the top shelf off, did a little bit of measuring to find my center of the ironing board, 
pre-drilled some drills and now, or pre-drilled some holes, and now I am just screwing the top onto the new ironing board, which is very hard to do with one hand while you're filming. So you just have to take my word for it. Ta-da, there she is. Now we're gonna move her into the sewing room, fill her up. And the best part is, I know you guys are wondering how stable this is. This is not, I'm like pushing down very hard and it's not going anywhere. So I think it's gonna be pretty stable. If I do run into some issues, I can always just add like a little leg there and a little leg there and she'll be good. But let me show you when she's all styled and organized. All right, here she is all set up. I know it doesn't look like much, but you guys, this is going to be a game changer. Let me take you through all the awesome features of my new DIY ironing station. First of all, I have 18, no, what was it? 16 inches of continuous space from one end to the other. You guys know how um, ironing boards typically taper at the end. This is all one piece. So I'm gonna be able to press out all my fabric nice and easily. It's also four feet wide, which is wider than uh, some fabric. Some fabrics are 60 inch, some are 44, but um, it's, a, it's more than a yard one way. So I should be able to press really quickly a lot at one time. Also, my wool pressing mat fits on here beautifully. It was a tight fit with my ironing board. And then as we come down to the storage components, I have a little handle, which is holding my pressing cloth. I've got a drawer that's a little messy, but it's holding like my um, presser finger, you know, so they don't burn your fingers. I've got, um, my sashers in here. I've got my bias binding makers, all kinds of fun stuff in there stored away. And then as we come down, I've got all those bulkier items like my Taylor's clapper and my hams and all of that. This is a steamer, handheld steamer. And then I also installed an extra little hook. These are cafe hooks or coffee mug hooks installed that to hold my sleeve board, which I'm now gonna use instead of the tapered end of the ironing board. So there she is, I am very happy. I will be using her a lot and reporting back on any little adjustments that I have to make. But like I said, I feel like she is really sturdy and not going to tip over, which was the thing that I was concerned about the most. Um, so nice and safe, big, organized, cute. I'm thrilled. Let me know if you guys are going to be tackling this project yourself. I will have links in the description box for all the products that I use to make this. Um, and I would be thrilled if you guys were able to put this tutorial to use in your own sewing space. But that is going to do it for me today. Thank you all so much for watching. See you soon. Bye.